Dear confreres and friends, hearty greetings to each and every one of you. Let us begin the seminar with a prayer to Saint Joseph by Pope Francis. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you, God entrusted His only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Dear confreres and friends, I cordially welcome you to this webinar to reflect on the theme a Salishan Reflection on St. Joseph, a very relevant theme as we are in the year of St. Joseph. At the very outset, I would like to thank Reverend Father Suresh Babu, our General Counselor in charge of formation for giving me this opportunity to share and to present this reflection. Devotion to Saint Joseph wasn't widespread in the Catholic Church and it took many centuries before his popularity grew among Christians. It was in 1870, Pope Pius IX proclaimed Saint Joseph the patron and the protector of the Universal Church. The month of March is dedicated to Saint Joseph and in the Roman Catholic Church, the feast of Saint Joseph is celebrated as a solemnity on the 19th of March. Having died in the arms of Jesus and Mary, according to the Catholic tradition, Saint Joseph is considered the model of the pious believer who receives grace at the moment of death. In other words, the patron of a happy death. Saint Joseph is frequently invoked for employment, daily protection, vocation, happy marriage, and a happy death. Pope Francis, on the 8th of December 2020, released the apostolic letter Patris Corde on the occasion of the 150th anniversary of the declaration by Pope Pius IX on 8th December 1870 of Saint Joseph as the patron of the Universal Church. For the same reason, he declared a year of Saint Joseph from the 8th of December 2020 to the 8th of December 2021. The title of the letter is Patris Corde, which means with a father's heart. In Pope Francis' apostolic letter, he expounds upon the qualities of Saint Joseph's fatherhood and how his fatherhood was an icon of God, the Father's heart for us, his children. Saint Joseph as a beloved father. 
quoting St. John Chrysostom, he spoke, the belovedness consists in his availability to the plan of salvation. And citing the example of St. Paul, the sacrifices he made for the plan of salvation. Thus, he became beloved father to the Holy Family and beloved father to the Church and Catholic families. When one leaves the faith and role of salvation in one's vocation, then one becomes beloved father in the context. Saint Joseph as a tender and loving father. Saint Joseph was the human foster father of Jesus who needed human love with tenderness. This tenderness is seen in Bethlehem by finding a place for him, taking him to Egypt to protect him from King Herod, and then in Nazareth. Until his death, Joseph remained a tender and loving father to Jesus. In the same way, Joseph is a tender, loving father to everyone in faith, accepting his love and care. My dear confreres and friends, today, a lot of roughness and toughness is growing in us, among us, and around us. This toughness and roughness can make us a tender, loving father. Only through tender, loving care, one becomes a human being or a human person. Saint Joseph as an obedient father. Joseph as an obedient father began to obey God who came to him through dreams. At the Annunciation, flight into Egypt, and then to Nazareth, Joseph did everything possible to save the Savior of the world. Thus, his obedience proved saving and sanctifying. Today, we are challenged to grow in the life of obedience. Saint Joseph as an accepting father. Joseph accepted Mary without humiliating her. Today, many find hard to accept each other and often acceptance comes after humiliating. Imagine, Joseph being a Jew had such respect for Mary and her womanhood. Again, Joseph was accepting father of Jesus. He accepted Jesus as his son and did everything for him without any doubts or suspicions. How often are we ready to accept each other today without doubts and suspicions? Joseph as a creatively courageous father. Joseph proved his courage from the moment of Annunciation until his departure from the world. He knew the consequences of accepting Mary and Jesus into his life. It was a great challenge, yet 
creatively he proved his courage by taking baby Jesus and Mary to Egypt. Then to bring Jesus up in Nazareth again needed such courage. To face the reality of life today, my dear confreyers and friends, is a great challenge. Saint Joseph teaches us to face the reality creatively and courageously. Saint Joseph as a working father. Jesus was known as the son of a carpenter, and this is self-evident truth that he was a son of a working father. Joseph worked hard to make his family of Nazareth comfortable and self-sufficient. Jesus also learned from him the work ethics. My dear confreyers and friends, one main culture that is growing among many today is the laws of work ethics. We are challenged to cultivate the work ethics in our personal lives. Saint Joseph as a father in shadows. Joseph is presented in the New Testament as a silent person. He played his role in salvation history in shadows. He was not an externalist or an exhibitionist. Today, when we look at the present scenario, people run after exhibitionism and externalism for advertisement and propaganda. Joseph stood always behind the curtain, a great lesson and an inspiration to imbibe in our personal life. One saint who worked to spread the devotion to Saint Joseph was Saint Francis de Sales, our heavenly patron. According to the book, Go to Joseph, our unfailing protector, Saint Francis de Sales would often preach, No image can be sweeter to my heart than that of Jesus being carried in the arms of the chaste spouse of Mary and calling him father a thousand times in infantile language, such as is prompted by the tender heart of a son. And St. Francis de Sales would frequently meditate on Jesus in the arms of St. Joseph, which became a way of spreading devotion to the saint. Speaking of the qualities and virtues of Saint Joseph, Saint Francis de Sales, in his spiritual conference, said, I shall single out three distinctive qualities that may be most appropriately be attributed to Saint Joseph, whom the Church compares to the palm tree. He is not just a patriarch, but the patriarch of patriarchs. He is more than a mere confessor, since in his confession one finds the honor attributed to bishops, the generosity of the martyrs, and of all saints. To the palm tree is attributed the three virtues that Saint Joseph excelled in, namely virginity, humility, and fortitude in his equanimity. 
It is certainly with very good reason that Saint Joseph is said to resemble the palm tree. For he was always very valiant, constant, and persevering. And Saint Francis de Sales says that our glorious Saint Joseph was endowed with all these virtues and practiced them marvelously well. Saint Joseph was constant. When seeing Our Lady with child and not knowing how that could be, it must have caused him great distress. Saint Joseph did not complain. He was not unkind, nor less gracious towards his spouse. He did not mistreat her, but remained as gentle and as respectful to her as he had ever been. Saint Francis de Sales says, Saint Joseph was faithful in as much as he valiantly bore without complaint and without remorse or repudiation of his spouse the possible effects of her being pregnant. He also says, imitate Saint Joseph who left the matter of judgment to God when he discovered that Mary was pregnant with child. Saint Joseph demonstrated valor and strength. It takes a strong man to be humble, and humility is seen throughout the whole course of Saint Joseph's life. He valiantly faced the two worst enemies of virtues, the devil and the world. And throughout his humility, he was able to repel the devil who himself was driven out of heaven because of his pride and to conquer the dictates of the world. With regard to perseverance of Saint Joseph, Saint Francis de Sales says, Oh! How greatly was Saint Joseph tried by God and even by people on his life's journey. The angel commands Joseph to set out quickly and to take Our Lady and the child in Egypt. Joseph sets out at once without saying a word. He does not inquire where shall I go? What road shall I take? How shall we find food? Who will receive us? He sets out immediately. In fact, he probably carried his carpenter's tools on his back. So he could still provide for his family. The angel had not even told him how long he should remain there. He could not establish himself in any permanent home. Not knowing when the angel might command him to return, Saint Joseph remained there in the foreign country, sure that God who commanded him to go would again command him when he had to return. And Saint Joseph was always ready to obey. Saint Joseph is also known as the just man. To be just is nothing else but to be perfectly united to the will of God and to be conformed to it in all events, prosperous 
or adverse. Saint Joseph shows himself to be a just man in treating Mary with proper honor and respect. Saint Joseph proves himself just by not humiliating Mary or divorcing her. He treated her with justice, accepting her with faith. He accepted Mary as the mother of the Son of God. He accepted Mary as the Virgin of God. He accepted Mary as his faithful spouse. Saint Joseph proves himself to be a just man by treating Jesus as the only Son of God. He accepted Jesus as his own Son with faith. Without faith, Saint Joseph would have maltreated Jesus. It was his deep faith that gave him the courage to be just. The theme of Saint Joseph's omnipotent intercessory power is also in the forefront of Saint Francis de Sales' theology of the saint, epitomized by his sermon on the virtues of Saint Joseph of 1622, one of the most famous preached on the saint. Preaching in the church of Saint Joseph in Annecy, where both his visitation sisters within the cloister choir and the laity in the body of the church worshipped, Francis solemnly proclaims, What more remains for us to say now, except that we cannot doubt at all that this glorious saint has great influence in heaven. Oh, how happy shall we be if we can merit a share in his holy intercession. For nothing will be refused him, either by Our Lady or by her glorious Son. He will obtain for us if we have confidence in Him, a holy growth in all kinds of virtues, but especially in those that we have found that He possessed in a higher degree than any others, which are most holy purity of body and mind, the most lovable virtue of humility, constancy, courage, and perseverance virtues which will make us victorious in this life over our enemies and which will make us merit the grace to go and enjoy in eternal life the rewards prepared for those who shall imitate the example given them by Saint Joseph while he was in this life. A reward that will be nothing less than eternal happiness, in which we shall enjoy the luminous vision of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear confreres and friends, as we honor Saint Joseph this year, it would be fitting for us to reflect on our own roles as leaders and fathers in our communities, churches, congregations, and families. Are we prepared to be people working in shadows with great humility? Let me repeat. Are we prepared to be people working in shadows with great humility. How many of us have grasped the height and the depth 
of the spirituality. If there is this core virtue which Salishan spirituality emphasizes, then the apostolic letter of Pope Francis on Saint Joseph will become a way of life. If there is humility, then there will be justice to our vocation. Then we can live for Jesus like Saint Joseph with a father's heart. Let me conclude with the prayer to Saint Joseph by Saint Francis de Sales, our heavenly patron. Glorious Saint Joseph, spouse of Mary, grant us, we beseech thee, thy paternal protection through the heart of Jesus Christ. O thou whose infinite power reaches out to all our needs, rendering possible for us that which is impossible, look upon the concerns of thy children with fatherly countenance. In the troubles and sorrows that afflict us, we have confident recourse to thee. Deign to take under thy loving protection this important and difficult endeavor, the cause of our worries, and dispose its success to the glory of God and to the benefit of his faithful servants. Amen. May God be praised. Live Jesus.